Steve Fyatt, Trees. Trees, Steve Fyatt. Let's take a walk through a beautiful forest, a forest of people, of you, you, and even you, Mr. Contest Chair. <laughs> Trees need sunshine, people need joy. Trees need water, people need love. Trees need fertile ground. People need a fertile community. Trees need other trees around to support and shield certain people. When I became an adult tree, I wanted my own offspring saplings. And one day I was blessed with my first offspring sapling, Monica. It came time for her first feeding. Her mother was too tired from the emergency C-section, despite having all that built-in sap. <laughs> As I held her, her tiny branches intertwined mine. And she started drawing hearts on my bark. Two years later, her sister sprouted. And also, Valerie started drawing hearts on my bark. Who's drawing hearts on your bark? It was my job to support and shield my saplings against the storms of life. But one day, I got the call every pair of parents. A distracted driver had chopped down my first sapling. It was as if lightning Monica could no longer draw hearts on my bark. I felt I had been fired as her protector. I could no longer serve her future. But thanks to the support of other trees, I survived and later thrived. Valerie was joined by a brother sapling, Alex. Now, most of my leaves are gone. <laughs> <laughs> my saplings have grown into adult trees and they've been transplanted from the greenhouse and from the bank of dad. <laughs> grand sapling. Harper. I can serve her future uh, by spoiling her the way grand trees should. <laughs> so many trees, so many burdens, of so many types. But I remember when I was a young sapling, a tree in our backyard was struck by lightning. And I noticed over the years that the bark slowly grew around that scar. It became difficult to see that original scar. In time, scars can disappear, but the tree still feels it inside. A tree can survive and continue to grow, grow and bear fruit. It will never be the same tree again. It will grow in ways different than it would have without a scar. So judge not your fellow trees. You know not what scars they bear. Maybe no one is drawing hearts on their bark. Maybe the pain from scars inside has made their bark tough and hard. Or even creepy like animals. <laughs> now, as you walk through life and you come up against a tree that might be troubled, what do you do? Get over a tree! You'll reach closure 
you're someday a tree. The best advice I got was from an elder tree named Virginia. You must decide what will get you through the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. If that corresponds with someone's expectations of you, great! If not, tough! <laughs> she actually used a different word there. I can't repeat it. Virginia was a very salty tree. <laughs> must grow in its own way. Each tree must find its way to light and love, and you can help. Light and love that will call it to the future. Each tree must find a new activity, a new purpose, a new future. The storms of life might blow off leaves and yet create new budding opportunities. To shine your light, your glorious, joyous light on trees that are drunk. Pull them to the future. Water trees with your love. Call it to the future. If a tree isn't in fertile ground, help improve that community or transplant it to a new future. As you walk through life, be kind to your fellow trees. You know not what scars they bear. Draw hearts on the bark of your fellow trees. And together with them, serve the future.